Europe is dying, according to Elon Musk. So is apparently most of the Western world because white people aren't having enough babies. The decrease in fertility has become one of the major talking points on the political right and has given rise to the pro-natalist movement. Today I have a review article about what policies have actually worked to raise birth rates and then I have opinions. Because what fun is YouTube if I don't get to have opinions every once in a while? The US fertility rate, that's the average number of children per woman, hit an all-time low in 2023. And though it's seen a minor uptick in 2024 with 1.79, it's still below replacement Level. In the past decades, the fertility rate has dropped below replacement level in all industrialized countries. It's likely to stay that way. According to a report from Pew Research Center, 47% of childless adults in the US under the age of 50 now say they're unlikely to have kids. And of those who said they're unlikely to have children, 57% said that the reason is that they just don't want to. Just why this is happening, no one really knows. There have been many speculations such as cultural changes, that women are more likely to work, the age at which they have children that has gone up, people would rather travel without babies in tow, TikTok. I'm sure someone has blamed TikTok. One of the leading theories is economic obstacles. It's supported by the fact that polls reveal a fertility gap in many countries. That is, the average number of children that couples have is lower than the number they say they'd like to have. Still, there is no easy explanation as the fertility rate is low even in countries like in Northern Europe that have excellent support for parents, plenty of maternity leave and state-supported childcare. Personally, I think it's a non-issue because if you've been following the news in the next 10 years, we'll all be replaced by robots and then become immortal or we'll all die depending on whom you listen to. There are some real challenges, both with increasing and decreasing populations, such as housing or care for the young or elderly, respectively. But these are solvable problems. Then again, it'd be easier if women just nicely had 2.1 children each, then we wouldn't have to worry about such things. Which is why a lot of governments have come up with creative ideas for what to do about it. Italy and Greece are offering bonuses per baby. In Hungary, couples get more money the more children they have, up to 30,000 euros if they have at least three. In Taiwan, parents get tax cuts and free pets. And the Danish government has told its citizens in no unclear terms to do it for Denmark. In a review that just recently appeared, a group of researchers sum up what of that has worked in the past. They found that the most consistently effective initiatives are cash benefits, such as birth payments or tax exemptions, but also paid leave and child care coverage. But while these do have measurable results, the effects are small. The most impactful birthing campaign was a $3,000 birth bonus in Australia introduced in 2004, which was later raised to 5000 That temporarily increased the fertility rate from about 1.76 to 2.02. It dropped again after the bonus was discontinued in 2013. In France, they introduced a moderate baby bonus of roughly €1,000, but financial support for the first year after birth and childcare support up to age two. That seems to have had a positive impact on the fertility rate. And also in Hungary, the birth bonus did seem to raise the fertility rate, just not by much. So the brief summary is that financial incentives do work but they don't make a huge difference. My guess at what's driving this trend is insecurity about the future. The world is rapidly changing and young people don't trust the situation enough to put children into the world. I think this is a rational reaction to the difficult situation that humanity is in at this very moment. So my recommendation would be that if you want people to have more babies, make sure they don't have much to worry about. Or maybe we can just leave that to the robots as well. I hear the 3D printers are already practicing. 
If you ever get the feeling that the news is more about storytelling than facts, Ground News is worth a look. Ground News is a news platform for people who value facts. They collect and summarize news, which has been published all over the world. Not only do they collect all articles on the same story in one place and give you a quick summary, they also give you a lot of extra information that you don't find in the standard media. You won't be surprised to hear that I read a lot of science news, but maybe you find it as surprising as I do that a lot of science news basically isn't covered on the political right, like this story about insects trapped in amber. Like, why is this a lefty story? I don't get it. Ground News also gives you a factuality check for each news item, tells you who owns the media outlets and shows you where the news has appeared. Another cool feature is what they call blind spot. This tells you which news has been almost exclusively covered only by one side of the political spectrum. I found it to be super useful for checking whether a story is being blown out of proportion, ignored or distorted. And of course, I have a special offer for you. That's a 40% discount on the Vantage plan, which gives you access to all their features. All you need to do is use my link ground.news Sabine or scan the QR code so they'll know I sent you. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.